Who is Shiva? Part 3 But the Lord had to open his eyes. India post Buddha Post Buddha, India saw a sudden change in the way spirituality was perceived. People started believing they themselves would have to find the way to liberation to end sufferings, which made the tradition of Bairagya or renouncement boom. The dispassion for worldly affairs became so heroic in the psyche of the Indians, it almost went to the extent of hampering social balance. The power of Buddha and his philosophy was so strong. It made kings abandon their kingdoms. It made husbands abandon their wives and fathers abandon their children in the search of liberation. This may have enabled some people to attain liberation. However, Keeping the societal wheel moving also was as important because the very existence of renouncement depends on having something to renounce. The centroid of human activities also moved further eastward and the lower Gangetic plane started gaining importance. This is the time when for the first time the concept of India as a nation was slowly coming into play, which earlier was a collection of small states having nothing much in common apart from being a collected landmass. Puranas, written around this time, for the first time calls out the historical boundaries of the holy land of Shapt Shindhu, the current day India. It defines a land which is north of the sea and south of the Himalayas that can only be linked by the philosophy. The advent of Buddha had made this connectivity through philosophy a bit more possible. Post Buddha, as the mass was more and more getting inclined towards the path of renouncements, the Sanatana Dharma started looking for the antidote. The antidote was a need of the hour at that time. As a civilization keeps on, only if people engage with the world. The antidote arrived in the form of Puranas. This was the reason why, about after 5 to 7 centuries after Lord Buddha's death, the Puranas were started being written. These pieces of literatures were the ones through which the complicated philosophies of Upanishads were attempted to take to the masses in form of stories. While some of the Puranas came up with novel plots and concepts keeping the base idea same, others just retold the old stories in a new way. The most accepted school of thought argues strongly and presents the most accepted arguments in favour of Puranas being the continuation of the original texts of Hinduism in Vedas. Only the context is different as the social context has changed in the previous 15 to 20 centuries. Puranas gave their fair share to the Lord. Out of 18 major Puranas, 6 are dedicated to Lord Shiva, out of which Shiva Purana, Linga Purana are the major ones. The idea of the antidote. When the idea which succeeded to talk about the conversion of an unhappy householder to a happy mystic in form of the stories of Buddha and Mahavira, they indeed happily gave up their kingdoms to become sages. In the counter story, a sage had to give up his sagehood to become a householder. This is how in Shiva Purana, Shiva is brought down from Kailasha, the symbol of ultimate renouncement to the most happening city of that time, Varanasi. Kailasha is the place where there is no life. It's the inner heat of sage Shiva that kept him going. Varanasi on the contrary was full of life in form of indulging things. Here everything that is material was present in abundance. And there was no other better method that could be introduced than a marriage of the sage to make him indulge with life again. In fact, in all the Puranas dedicated directly to Lord Shiva, it is equivocally called out that Devi Shati, whom Shiva was married to, had to penance hard to make the Lord agree to marry her, a mission she finally succeeded in. This is the tussle between life and renouncement in a period when almost all nihilist philosophies did their part to take the householder away from the normal course of the material world in search of liberation. Here, Shiva symbolized that Arhat or Jinnah who has forcefully shut their eyes down and kept themselves away from the indulgement of material world. Devi Sati's austerities are the symbol of persuasion constantly thrown towards the seeker of the inner world to indulge with the outer world. And when finally the sage agreed to come back to the normal course, there was a problem of acceptance. This comes in the story of Daksha Yagna associated with Lord's marriage. In the story, 
Daksha was a king whose daughter Devi Sati was convinced to marry Shiva through her devotion but could not convince her father about her marriage with the ascetic with minimum interest in the material world. In the pursuit to be the most powerful king in the world, Daksha organized a grand fire sacrifice to which he did not invite the Lord and Devi Sati. Devi, instead of not being invited, went there and got badly insulted by her father, which were aimed at Shiva's humble lifestyle and mixing with the downtrodden. As Shiva's followers included all ghosts, demons, ghouls, etc. Not being able to accept the insulting words from her father, she jumped into the sacrificial fire prepared for the occasion, which led her to death. When the Lord got to know the whole incident, he was so angry that from the heat of his anger was born Biravadra and Bhadrakali, who was ordered to kill Daksha and destroy the place where the sacrificial ritual were to take place. The two fearsome beings entered the ritual place and destroyed whatever could be. The main priest of the sacrifice, Sage Vrigu, created a fearsome army of Ribhus, a class of celestial beings, to fight against Biravatra and Bhadrakali. But they were of no match with the power of the two. Finally, the place was destroyed and the king Daksha was decapitated as mentioned in Bayu Purana. While Daksha's decapitation may be seen as the end of ritualistic religion following the Vedic traditions to a more devotion-based one. Inclined towards worshipping, the gap between the two worlds, that is, world of sacrifice and the worldly involvements were yet to be bridged though. The next part of the story firmly establishes the victory of celebration of life over the monastic orders. After the death of the first wife, the Lord naturally went back to the world he belonged to, the one that is of the renouncers, refusing to participate in the world. It is said that, taking the advantage of the same, a demon named Tarokasur threatened to uproot Indra, the celestial king. The uprooting of Indra in Indian mythology has come again and again. As Indra symbolized rain, we can loosely assume uprooting Indra is hampering the cycle of life. Supported by the food generated out of harvest, heavily dependent upon rains. However, there are different contexts. Here, a more apt explanation could be the hampering of the order of society. As the ones filled up with sattva gunas, pious qualities, were heading towards a monastic living, leaving the society in the hands of those with rajas and tamas gunas, less pious. This is why the renouncers had to be brought back to the mainstream. The expected harmony between the two is symbolized in Purana as Kandha, the future son of Lord from Parvati. It is said that it was Kandha who could kill Tarokasura. In other words, a harmony between the hermit and the world could cast the evil away, resulting in a better society. The place in the antidote. This was the time when India as a country was seeing its golden days in terms of prosperity under two great dynasties, the Mauryans followed by the Guptas. The centroid of the human population had even shifted eastwards by then, evident from the increased importance of the city of Pataliputra, current day Patna, which was the capital of both the dynasties. Economic stability also enabled a boom in trading activity in this resourceful land. By this time, the people in the Gangetic Plain has already adjusted the trade routes with its geological limitations of being landlocked. Thus arrived the two most important roads of those days called Uttarapath and the Kinapath, much like the north-south and east-west corridors of today. These two historical roads intersected near Varanasi. On top of it, a fairly busy river port made the city the most important trade and exchange hub of that time, even more important than the capital. An understanding of this made the Lord Buddha organize his first sermon in Sarnath just outside Varanasi. Not only Buddha, but the Jain Tithankaras also utilized the geographic location of Sarnath to spread the Jain philosophy. It was a time for Sanatana Dharma to reinforce the importance of this place. As from this point, ideas used to spread fastest at that time. So Parvati manifested as the Annapurna of Kashi or Varanasi, who feeds the whole world instead of being the wife of a hermit. She is the affectionate mother who cannot ignore the hunger of her children, 
whose care goes for beyond the individualistic motive of getting liberated. She is the one whose heart goes for others. She is the one who instead of being a goddess remains on this earth to feed the mankind. This aspect is the aspect of compassion that completes Shiva. The hermit who till this time was inspiring people to go for something which was outside the society now slowly develops empathy for the society and its people. This empathy remained the central theme of religion for the next thousand years and continues. This empathy makes the ultimate truth of religion a kind, wish-fulfilling entity that is aware of the suffering of its devotees, who sees everything from his celestial abode, who is there sometimes to test the devotees in form of suffering, but at the end, it's him who does only well to the mankind. For such a deity who for next thousand years was supposed to be worshipped for his compassion only, had to open his eyes. The serene meditating idols of Shiva by this time started getting replaced by the images of Shiva Parvati. With Parvati on his side, the Supreme Lord is not meditating. Rather, he is seeing his devotees with open eyes, with one hand raised in Varuda Mudra, the wish-fulfilling posture. Not only Shiva, but around this time Buddhism also changed its course accordingly. The concept of individual arhat got replaced by bodhisattvas, people who could enlighten themselves but residing among unenlightened to help them attain nirvana. Like Parvati in Buddhism, it was Tara, the goddess of compassion who gave completeness to the concept of Buddha. Today, in different parts of the country, goddess Tara got adopted as one of the manifestations of the supreme goddess who is the source for Sati, Annapurna and Parvati.